Everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. About four hours ago, Ubiquity released the Unify Network Application 7.0.20. We need to note that under Overview, this release is currently a release candidate. And we'll look at some of the comments by UI Glenn afterwards. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. If you'd like to support the channel, we do have memberships available now, and you could hit the join button down below. So Unify Network Application 7.0.20 is a pretty big release, but we're not going to want to push this out to our customers until we know it's stable. I've already pushed it out to my UDM Pro as I saw that the update was available. Now there's an issue with the release in the release candidates, and let's go into that now. Whenever there's a new release, I suggest to go down and read the comments below the actual post. We can see here from UI Glenn, he says, Hello everyone, an update for everyone as of today, 7.0.20 is still in release candidate, as stated under the overview. We will remove the note about the RC and comment in the release post when the releases gets promoted to stable or official. There is an issue with the Unify OS where it matches release with release candidate, which is why your consoles are seeing 7.0.20 on the release candidate release channel. This issue will be fixed in future Unify OS releases. Like he says twice in here, this is still a release candidate, so it is not a stable release yet. So use caution when you're updating. Since mine is already updated and it's already visible to the general public, I could speak about it. So let's talk about some of the improvements. So it improves the settings user interface, improved dashboard user interface. It updates the log4j version 2.17.0. It adds a white theme to the settings page, add multicast DNS settings for each network, add limit for data retention settings, add unified device disconnect notifications. It adds WRTC support for the Apple M1 chip, add support for reconnecting Unify clients. So an example of this is Unify Protect Wi-Fi cameras, add new device auto link setting in global AP settings. It adds smaller subnets to network form. We add multi-factor authentication support, add auto backup feature to the settings, add pause, remove Wi-Fi network, site to site VPN and radius server tables. It allows max of 255 networks on the UDM Pro, UXG Pro and the UDM SE. And it allows for getting devices in adoption failed state. It enables MDNS by default for new networks when using auto settings. It improves Wi-Fi signal mapper latency when roaming between access points. It implements layer three switching DHCP relay support, change default LAN name, make multiple site display by default. And then if we scroll down below, it has a ton of different bug fixes, which I'm not going to go through but I will post the link to this release note down below. So let's take a look at some of the updates on 7.0.20. I'm going to be using my UDM Pro and this is already up to date. Looking at the dashboard, to me, it doesn't look like a whole lot has changed. The only thing that I notice is this Wi-Fi clients. Although I'm not too sure if this is new within this release as I don't use the new UI too much. But we could see that Wi-Fi clients on the 2.4 gigahertz, we have 11 clients on Wi-Fi 4, and then we have one client on Wi-Fi 6. If we look under the 5 gigahertz, we have seven clients on Wi-Fi 5, and then we have three on Wi-Fi 6. Going into our settings, this is where we're gonna notice some changes. Under Wi-Fi, we could see all my Wi-Fi SSIDs, and then we could see this pause radio. If we click this radio button, it will pause the Wi-Fi for that network. We could also see this new section, which is global AP settings. The traffic throughput may be slightly reduced for one to two minutes. We could do radio optimization. And if we look at the eye icon, it says manually run a scan to optimize your AP channel settings. We could also schedule optimization. We could do channel list. We could do AP exclusions. We could do new device auto link wireless meshing. I have that enabled. And then we have our connectivity monitor type on a gateway. If we take a look under our network, we also have the pause network for that as well. Let's go ahead and create a new network as there's been some changes to that as well. I'm going to call this network 7.0.20. And under router type, we could either select if we have our UDM Pro or a layer 3 switch, or we could have it do the VLAN only. If we click VLAN only, we're just gonna be selecting the VLAN ID that we'll be using. Now under gateway IP subnet, we have the auto scale, which I'll deselect, and we could see my host address is 192.168.2.1, and then we have our net mask. 
Our net mask is a slash 24, which gives us 249 usable addresses. If we click the drop down menu, we could select different net masks. So we have a slash 30, which gives us one usable host, 29, 28, 27, and so on and so forth. It also shows us information about our gateway IP, the broadcast IP, the usable IPs, and then the DHCP range, as well as our subnet mask. And then under advanced, we could either set it to auto select our VLAN ID and all the settings for us, or we can manually select that. If we manually select it, we could specify the VLAN ID and the network type. So it looks like the standard network type used to be what we called corporate, and then we have our guest network. We could also do content filtering right from this page. By default, it's set to none, but you could have it as work or family. We had enable IGMP snooping and multicast DNS is enabled by default. Below we have our DHCP options and then we have our IPv6 options. Now let's take a look under internet. So I just have the one ISP connection right now and it's my default WAN1. We could give this a name though if we'd want to. We could see the host device and then we could see the port that this WAN connection is on. And we could also give it its expected ISP speeds. If we scroll further down, we could enable UPnP, which I highly recommend you not doing, and we could create new dynamic DNS. Okay, now for the VPNs. The VPN looks a little bit different. Currently, I do have a VPN configured, but it's not enabled, as you can see. The protocol is L2TP. We have my pre-shared key, and this is something new. We have our server address, so it's going through WAN1. But we could specify this VPN to go through WAN2 if we have a WAN2 connection. And then if we need to create a site-to-site -site VPN, that would be down at the bottom. Now let's take a look at traffic management. And this was something new released in 6.5.55, but we have our rules. We could create rules to block a certain device from reaching an application like Facebook if we'd like. And we could see all of these type of examples. So we have action, which would permit or prohibit. We have matching, so select applications, domains, or ports that this rule will apply to. We have a device, so that any device within your network. And then coming soon, we have a speed limit and a schedule. And nothing else has really changed here. We have static routes, and then we have traffic and device identification. Under our firewall, we still have our country restrictions. We have off, block, or allow, and then we could choose our countries and the direction it goes in. We could have both direction, outgoing, or incoming. And we also have our threat management, so we could have it off, detect only, or detect and block, and then we could set our sensitivity level. I have mine on custom, but you could have yours on low, medium, or high. Under system, we could have our network notifications turned on, default, or custom. We could have our territory, where you live. We could have our language time format, and then we could check back with the legacy interface, which would be classic mode. That's the interface that I typically work in. Under theme, we could switch it back and forth from dark mode to light mode. Let's choose dark mode now and apply it. Now we're on dark mode and we can go back to light mode if we'd like. We could enable Wi-Fi man and then we have our whole update section. We have our migration and then we have our backups. And we also have support info. So if we need to send in a network support file, network configuration or server logs, we could download it right from this interface. So that's going to be it for me in this video. I still need to do some testing with this update. Once again, make sure you test this before pushing it out even to yourself or to customers. Read the forums to see if there's anything critically wrong with it. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.